And today we have something that I think would interest not only seniors, but uh, the whole community. And it's a story about the Art Lake. And I have several very interesting guests to present to you. And uh, first of all, it would be Tina Wagner, who got these people all together so we could have a program today. So, um, and then comes uh, Pierre Lee, who uh, is with the Peters Township Library. And uh, Carolyn Johnson is uh, uh, one of the first members of the Art League. Yep. Uh -huh. And uh, Kathy, Hartman. Kathy Hartman. And uh, how long have you been with the Art League? About four and a half years. And I'm the chairperson for the library exhibit. Oh, OK. And uh, Jenny Swartz. Swartz. And what do you do? Well, I've been with the League five years. And I'm the coordinator of the art classes. Oh, okay. So you round people up for the classes. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and at present, you are meeting where, Carolyn? Uh, we're at Trinity Methodist Church, and uh, we have a meet. There are five meetings a year, and we can bring in guest artists, and uh, they demonstrate and give their talks. And we've been going for 37 years. Well, we'll be interviewing Carolyn a little bit more later, and uh, she'll give us the whole history of uh, the Art League. So for now, I think uh, what we'll do is maybe uh, talk to Pierre Lee to uh, tell us a little something about what the art has done for the library. Uh, Irma, you really want me to talk about what uh, uh, art you've been done for the library. <laughs> you may have to give me an hour. <laughs> uh, we started with Murray Artley. We have a long and a productive relationship. Uh, let me tell you, since we moved to the present old library, 1976, with Murray Artley uh, they displayed beautiful pictures in the lobby. And uh, that's why I said, Are you sure you want me to talk about it? And they not only uh, give the pictures in the lobby for people coming to the library, have a, you know, make our library look beautiful. But because of pictures and uh, the promoted people wanted to look for the more art books. And also Murray Arnie they gave us uh, even the money to buy more art books. So now we moved to this beautiful library in 1999, February. And Murray Arnie jumped on it, but like no time, put up all these beautiful pictures you're gonna see later. Uh, they not only handle the classes, and uh, probably you don't remember, in, in the past we have adult classes from your member to teach in children's. Now we still have a children's art classes all the time. I always say, what would be more than like natural marriage <laughs> with <laughs> library, with the artist, and also partnership between artist and the librarians, and make local talent in a very non-competitive circumstances to have the pictures and the people come in if they don't expect all these pictures. I remember one lady said, look, this is my neighbor. <laughs> I didn't know she can draw or she can paint. So truly, truly, it's a sense of uh, community. We are center of community. And I think artists brought in not only uh, just to say, oh, hey, the pictures in the library. In our books, because of that, a lot of people said, well, would you like to accept my donation to buy more uh, reference books in arts and uh, all children's books? Now you're gonna say, how many arts books in the library? All I can tell you is arts is a broad subject. Uh, if we just to say arts book very narrowly, we have a close to 1,000 books. Then if we, some of the books including arts, such as famous artists in biography, those. So we have uh, many books, and I take this opportunity to invite community to come to check out your community library, what kind of resource they have. Mm -hmm. I think I talked too much, yeah, or might help me out. <laughs> we did donate paintings for your uh, option. Yes. Last year. Uh, last year and before last year too, and yes. for our annual dance, those uh, donations enable us to buy 
more inputs. And uh, I thank you very much. And uh, I always said, to, it's so nice to have uh, pictures in the library. I mean, people say, what they say? Help me out. What they say about uh, pictures or words? Uh, words. 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 <laughs> See, right. our books have words. <laughs> <laughs> some place where there's just bare walls and you see pictures and that it lightens up the place and it really makes you know there's just something about art and I just feel so amazed at artists I mean they see things that I never see I mean you know an artist can pick out things in a picture that an ordinary person wouldn't even know was there and uh, that was brought to my attention several times and I'm, oh I never saw that was there but, but and uh, Art is very, very important, and it does help with the decorations and everything. And, and yeah. so, I also heard they're looking for your monthly change or every six weeks. Yes. yes. Oh, people and have it, been very kind with their comments. Yeah, they said when we yeah, They said they come to the library also very um, give them another reason to make more trips to see your pictures. Each month have a different theme mm -hmm. every six weeks or whatever you. Mm -hmm. Have a display. That's wonderful. It, it's a place to promote uh, visible, more visible for the local artist. Mm -hmm. See, we don't let the other state people come here to <laughs> exhibit their <laughs> work. It's very oddly. <laughs> well, there's a lot of talent right here. Well, we appreciate using the library. It's a beautiful place to show off the artwork. We're so proud of that. And Kathy and uh, Jenny work their heads off putting it up and uh, taking it down and we have him to thank also. Mm -hmm. we, we have a, a tremendous amount of uh, wonderful people in the world of our lake. Very true. Now, uh, what about, uh, let's take a little tour around before we interview some other people in that and uh, to see some of the art that has been hanging here in the library. So we will be back in just a few minutes. This is our Mugrega. This is our Mugrego from Senior Perspective, and we're back again now, and we're going to show you some of the artwork that is hanging in the library, and also I'm going to introduce two ladies that have been, that um, hangs the artwork and takes it down and changes it for the library. So this is Kathy Hartman and Jenny Swartz. And Kathy, perhaps you might want to go first and tell us something. Okay, I'm chairperson for the library exhibit and have been for the past two years, and Jenny is my assistant and was also chairman uh, prior to that. We change the library exhibits every six weeks, and we get quite a number of paintings. This month we have about 23 paintings hanging in the library. That many? Yes. Oh. We have them on the first and second floors of the library. And these all art from the league itself? Yes, they're all art league members who exhibit their work here. And we usually have a theme, um, and they bring paintings accordingly to whatever the theme is. And we also accept ones that aren't with that theme. And like I said, we hang them on both floors of the library, depending on how many paintings we get. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe there was something about your daughter getting a, this is a little bit off the question of the paintings hanging, but still I think it does relate to it. Uh, an art scholarship through the Art League? Yes, my daughter, her senior year of high school, received the Art Award from the Murray Art League, which was a monetary award, and it helped her so she could buy art supplies for college. She was majoring in art, and um, it also gave her a lot of confidence to help her out and to help her get started. And I think it's a wonderful thing that the Art League does for these young artists, and we hope that um, a lot of high school students and other area students would get involved with our art league. Well, to know too that somebody's behind them. Yes. yes. And that, that's probably very, very important. And it gives them, like you say, confidence. In yes. This, so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? No, but I'd like Ginny to talk about okay, her Ginny. years with the library. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> okay. Um, I started hanging over in the, uh, the old library, okay. and it was a little more. Um, Archaic, <laughs> yeah, but it was it was fun and it was quite an education on how to hang paintings and and make them look well and you know put them with each other. 
but uh, it was an it was a nice experience, and I always enjoyed Peter's comments and help with that respect. And I was chairman over there, and I came over here, and we set up the hanging system for the library because they did not want to have any um, nails put in their walls. Oh, I see where you've got a strip up there. Right. And hang up. Wow, and that's we had, interesting. We, the McMurray Art League paid for all these hangers mm -hmm. so that we could hang this artwork. Uh -huh. So that's, that was a, one of our gifts to the library. Well, that's... You know, that's wonderful. I like that idea of how to hang them without putting nails well, in the wall. Yes, it worked very well for the library, mm -hmm. but it took a little bit of, of ingenuity, ingenuity to find it. Yes. <laughs> so now I'm Kathy's assistant. She was mine over in the old library, and now I'm hers. Uh -huh. Very good. Yes. Well, but yeah. I think it's a wonderful it's fun venue here. for we really enjoy the paintings, it. and I do think it adds a lot to the library. Oh, in yes. fact, the library and the librarians themselves downstairs are always happy when we come in to change because they see this for six weeks and when we're coming in they're always very like oh excited you know what what is the, what are the new paintings going to be what right. is the theme going to be this time so they're happy to see the change too instead of having the same thing hanging you know so for years and years thing. and years yeah. mm -hmm. so so it's just wonderful that uh, and some of these oh they're beautiful I mean, some of this work, I mean, wow. Yes, we have a lot of very talented yes, artists. Yes, we do. And the ones who hang here do a wonderful job. You see, that's something that the, the ordinary public doesn't even know about. And that We are the ordinary public. That's right, you are. <laughs> you are. We are. And uh, the extraordinary, too. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't get on to do anything like that. That's not necessarily true. Oh, yes, it is. Everyone has an ounce of art in them, and it just depends on how you develop it. Well, I'm afraid my needs for a lot of development. <laughs> well, maybe this is your art. <laughs> but um, is there anything else that you can think of? That, uh, we're going to go downstairs also and see some more mm -hmm. of the art, and perhaps there'll be something else you might like to okay. say about that. Okay? okay. Thank you. Thank we'll see you in a moment. Okay, we're down here uh, in the on the first floor of the library now, and um, my two guests, Ginny uh, and Kathy will continue telling you about how they hang the pictures and different things that goes on what they have to do here at the library. So who wants to be first? I'll go ahead. Uh, something I forgot to mention upstairs was that all the paintings that we exhibit for the most part are for sale and um, each painting has a tag on it with the name of the painting, the artist, the medium, and the price. So if anybody's interested in pur purchasing artwork at the library, all they have to do is contact myself or Ginny and check with the librarians and they usually give us a phone call and then we contact the artist and um, take care of the sale that way. And unless a painting is listed as not for sale, like I said, they all are already available and people would be more than happy to make a sale here and we also we donate part of the proceeds to the library so that the library does get something from each sale did I hear someone saying that uh, you have prints available is it of all the paintings or no, just of some of them just of some yeah, the individual artist decides whether they want to sell the painting or prints for instance um, that painting over there Carolyn this one was there. informing me that that actual painting itself is not for sale but she has prints available matted and framed that she will sell that look exactly like that but for the most part, the paintings are, and each individual artist usually lets you know if the actual painting, is, the original painting is for sale or if they have prints available. Are the prints about the same size as the painting or uh, are they, well perhaps I can ask Carolyn that later on. <laughs> yes, I believe they the are. Size. You get the exact same They're the same, same size. Thing. They're the same size. Uh -huh. right. Okay, that was Carolyn answering my question back in the background there. <laughs> so, uh, but these are so beautiful. I mean, you could just, oh. Uh, Our theme this month was spring. Yes. Spring. Uh -huh. And so what the ones that were in that genre, we put down at the, lo the lower level. If there were any others, then we coordinate them upstairs. So we tried to coordinate the colors so that it's a pleasing to the eye. You've done a wonderful job. I mean, one's prettier than the other one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it really does dress up the library. It does. There was, I had an experience that uh, I used to deliver 
things door to door, vegetables and all that. And I had brought this one customer a little box, a box of strawberries and a dozen of eggs. And the next week I went back and she had a painting of the eggs and the strawberries. Oh, and uh, I have it hanging in my kitchen, and which and I never thought of even anything like that would be, would show. Mm -hmm. But it really does show up beautifully in that. So that's what I said. Art really, it shows off an awful lot. And, uh, it, it's part of you. It makes it pleasant to walk into a room. It does. It really does. It brings back memories for me. Yes, it does. Yeah, you know, exactly. So, uh, is there anything else you might like to add? No, I think I've said about everything. You, I you say you change them like every six weeks? Every six, six weeks. weeks. Uh-huh. Do you have enough art to go around all the time? Usually, oh, yes. <laughs> In fact, well, sometimes I have to turn some away, which I hate to do, but... <laughs> yes. yeah. Like I said, we have 23 paintings this month, and that's really a lot. Oh. So we usually do this area, the area behind the librarian's desk, and then the overload goes upstairs sometimes. So How much nicer to see the paintings with the computers below. <laughs> so you do do something else. To it looks rather them. somber without them. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, uh -huh. right. Well, I thank you, Jenny, very much, and Kathy. And uh, thank you, Irma. We'll be continuing on with the show. I think we're going to the police station next, but and uh, we may have another interview in between. But um, we will be back. This is Irma Grego. This is Irma Grego, Senior Perspective, and we're back now. And I'm going to interview Carolyn Johnson, who was the founder of the uh, uh, McMurray Art League. Um, how old is the Art League anyway? The Art League was formed back in May of 1965, and um, it, it all started when a group of artists decided that uh, with varying types of talents, and some had art degrees and some didn't even paint at all, but they loved art. And um, I had this idea in my mind for a while, but then when I was teaching art, um, in the, it was after school art, and um, Phil Joyce from the high school was working with me, and we were walking to class, and he said, you know what? He said, this township needs an art league. He said, there's so much talent in this, in this township, and we better start something. So I said, all right, I'll have a cup of coffee for people in my dining room, and we got eight of my friends who were artists together, and we decided that we would start this group. There was, um, let's see, there was Irma Baker, and there was Ann Waldner and Gwen Huppelberg and Peg Signorella and Marion Roach, Mar Ann Williamson and Alice Ong. And soon others came to join us within a few months, Jean Fletcher, Tina Wagner and Peg Fickinger and June Houlihan. Yeah, I remember some of those names. Remember? Oh yes, uh-huh. And you said you met in your dining room. Well, that was the first. Yeah. First, okay. And then the next organizational meeting was over at the uh, Center Presbyterian Church, and um, they got that started, and uh, then the second one was the actually the first meeting, and uh, they had, believe it or not, 40 people had signed 40 up. 40 from just, from just around here. <laughs> but not only that, but in five months, there were 75 people that had joined the McMurray Art League. Wow. Well, we were off and running, that's for yes. sure. Uh -huh. And uh, you met where, when you had the 75, where did you meet, at the Presbyterian? We were still at Presbyterian that time, but then we went to the high school and met there for a while. And then we met at the Donaldson's Crossroads in the little little room up above where the theater used to be. Oh, yeah. And we had that for quite a while. Then when the VFW at the um, corner of McMurray Road and Valley Brook uh, built their building, we took the upper floor and we had classes up there. We taught adults and we taught children. And then um, uh, then they had classes. Uh, one of the classes I really enjoyed, they studied the old masters and the contemporary painters. That was for adults. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm sure that you had some very important painters in that, uh, is that what they're called? The regional painters or something from around here. Perhaps you could enlighten us a little bit on that. Well, we had some wonderful men uh, and women. Uh, one in particular was Nat Youngblood. He's a famous artist from over in West Middletown. He does the uh, Mexican 
uh, excuse me, he does southwestern paintings <clears throat> and uh, beautiful work. And was he uh, not featured last year, I believe, at yes. that Art and Around? Yes, he was. Yes, and it really brought a lot of attention. So to he that came there. to our Art League and he oh. talked to us. And then we've had Bud Gibbons and Paul Edwards from W&J and then John Del Monte, who teaches in the U U.S. and also in, uh, in Italy in the summertime. He brings students over to Italy. And then Steve Leonardi, who does um, wonderful uh, uh, animals, uh, birds, and things like that. <clears throat> there are five meetings a year, and you multiply that by 37 years, and that's uh, such a list of wonderful painters, I can't even list them all. We had potters and sculptors and weavers and photographers. Uh, I remember seeing, uh, I don't know, uh, Mrs. Smith. She uh, does sculpturing. What is Barb? Is it Barb Smith? Mary Lou, Mary Lou Smith? No, I think it was Barb. Lives on McMurray Road. Oh, yes, Barb Smith does yeah. sculpturing. Right. Very I good. saw, I was at her house, and she just had this hunk of marble. I mean, it was just a, just a big hunk of stone there, you know. And uh, I used to bring her vegetables and that. And uh, every week I'd be there. And I'd see this piece of stone emerge, emerge into, it was an Indian princess, and it was beautiful. And I can say that, you know, that I saw the beginning of that, and uh, I can't believe that out of that hunk of stone, such a beautiful piece such of art. Such a gorgeous thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, great? that's a little bit off the subject. Oh, that's and that's all right. uh, but, uh uh, let me see. Uh, besides the library, where else are your pictures shown? All right, your paintings um, rather. Let's let's go back to the first show that they had in in 1966. We held that in a storeroom, a vacant storeroom, uh, at the up there near the old post office. You know where that little area is that yeah. goes down. Mm -hmm. They had a show there. And the following year, though, was the big one, and they had the high school band and they had under the direction of David Pugh mm -hmm. and they had uh, John Reed King from WQED, no excuse me, KDKA okay. television and radio and he was the master of ceremonies and uh, I don't know they must have had about 75 paintings. It was all on the walkways uh, up at the crossroads mm -hmm. and that was wonderful. Then uh, we've had shows from time to time most of them were um, in malls. We started out in South Hills Village, and that was a nice place to have a show. Then we went to the Washington Mall and the Donaldson's Crossroad Court near the theater. And then PPG in Pittsburgh was quite quite impressive. Oh, you went there yeah, too? Yeah, went it, oh, even down that would in be Pittsburgh. a nice place to show, uh, show off your art. It was. Because it's a beautiful building to begin oh, with. you know it all, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the last place we've been at and which is where we have our show coming up in in May. It's of at the Galleria. Year? That's correct. May, I think, the 7th to 14th or something like that. And that's in the Galleria. We've also been uh, just short little extra exhibits at the Dennis Theater, you know, in, in mm -hmm. Mount Lebanon, and at the um, um, Village Square Mall and West Penn Hospital. Village Square, we took one of the vacant rooms and there was about maybe eight art leagues went together oh. to start to show their paintings on a yearly basis. Mm -hmm. But then it, uh, it, I guess they needed the storeroom. They'd make more money, you know, with a, <laughs> a, with a, uh, a dealer in there. Uh, what are some of the programs that you've done in the past? Well, I'm so proud of that art league. There, one of the beginning ones was they called it um, a free art critique, and people would go in their yeah go in their basements or their attics and, and find their paintings that they've done years ago, or people that are working away at their art and they had a free critique, and certain members of the league would come with and, and help the people with their and give them ideas because many of the people in the league have degrees in art and they've done their painting for years and years, so it was nice. Mm -hmm. That was one thing, and then another thing was they had called the Plan for Art, and they chose some school children to come to the, to the art building, and they had some of the members of the league were chosen to dis uh, have their pictures up there on display, and they had, um, um, they would talk about their painting, and then the children would choose what would they like to take to their classroom, 
for a uh, to keep them for a month, and so they would choose their their favorite pictures and take them in. And the children choose the yes uh, the that got, got them interested in art then. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, let me see. Uh, do you have any uh, oh kind of work the league is doing? What, what kind are they doing now? Or? Like benevolent, benevolent work. work, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, at one time, they went over to Western State and they gave the children art over there. And um, then another that thing, would have been hard. it was hard. It was that hard. Would have been we very always hard. had to have a, a guard with us because yeah. some of the children were violent. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, the one that was really nice was the scholarships that they award to the any student uh, senior in high school going planning to go into college with their. Um, for art, yeah, for art. Uh, they give them scholarships. They give them at the time when we have the shows and the, and the awards, and that's usually at the end of the school year. And the children, put their, yeah, they, the children put their artwork up and they're displayed at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we could give two awards, I think. So uh, I'm very proud of the Art League and their goals of, of uh, everything that they've been trying to achieve. They're still going, and uh, we hope that everybody, if anybody hears this show, will understand that we, it's open to all people. And uh, When do you meet? We meet on the second Tuesday, five times a year. It's September, October, November, and then March and April. Am I right, Tina? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Can you say something about your art in the round? Oh, yeah. You were in that. Don't they yeah. have a lot of... Uh, what do they? Oh, yeah. For that, I attended the art and around. Did you go yes, to that I one in yeah, Washington? Remember, I saw you at the yeah. courthouse. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. I never saw so much art. I mean, all kinds and everything. And uh, I did see your paintings there, and uh, it was it was wonderful. That was a wonderful way of displaying the uh, art. But they were from all over. All over the area. It was for what the you mean by area? Washington oh. County, or uh, as far as anybody wants to bring their pictures in. And the, okay. the um, uh, twenty-five percent went to this organization called Women W O M E N, and that's women in crises that are having time troubles, and it's a very good, worthwhile cause. Yeah, I know I attend it every year. Good, and uh, I really enjoy it. Yeah. Cookies are good too. <laughs> yeah, and the cheese and wine. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. So, but uh, it's been wonderful talking to you, Carolyn, and Thank I you. always admire all your work and everything, and I believe you had something to show us I here. I do. I thank you for asking. <laughs> this is a calendar that we did uh, three years in a row, and I'm so proud of the people. They, um, we have a painting. Oh, of course, the advertisers were helped to make money for the league. And then, starting out with January, this is for Ge this is Gwen Huckleberg's. I think it's Gwen's. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. It's Ann Waldner. And um, different ones. Look at that. This was a minister of our church, and I loved his work. Is that called abstract? Yes. He takes a calendar that's a blotter on his desk, and when he's talking to people, he fills in the date. And he doodles. Doodles, and you never recognize what the date is, but it's still there. Every every not every uh, night date on the calendar. I doodle too, but not like that. <laughs> um, this is Dim Wallace's over there at oh, the, that's uh, the train the uh, train station yeah. in uh -huh. uh, over in in Bridgeville. Um, this is by a man named Bonatti. Ben Bonatti? Bonato. I'm sorry. And while this cal this um, calendar went to press, he died. So at the very end, we have another one of his pictures, and we have below the date he was born and the date he died. Is it memorial? Is it memorial. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I won't bore you with the That's rest right. of these. That's all right. Let's look at them. They're interesting. <laughs> they are very nice, and we hope to do this again sometime. Oh, yeah. This is by Sally Heston. It's Penn Station. Yes, Penn the Station. Old Penn Station. Right. This Where is, is by Marlene Humphreys. It's um, just one of the, maybe it's out of her imagination. I'm not sure. Here's um, Jim Wallace's. Here's um, Bonato again. 
you know that you know that just looks like some ramshackle barn or something. Oh, look at that. Oh, and they make it so yeah. interesting. Uh -huh. oh, this Grace Chella did this. This is from the from down the, up there at the Galleria, and um, so she the was the sitting there, sitting with her paintings, um, selling the paintings, and she turned one direction and started to do a drawing. That was one of the uh, places there. This is from Gwen Huckleberg. It's called Leatherman Barn. Excuse me, Leatherman Bridge. The covered bridges. And this is by um, Maggie Wood. Mm -hmm. She was one of the past presidents. She does a lot of calligraphy. Mm -hmm. Here is um, Betty Reed, very prominent one. And there's the tribute to Peter Bonato. Mm -hmm. So that was, we hope to do that again sometime. Yeah, well, you've got a we'll lot see. of nice paintings to pick from in that, too. Well, thank you very oh, much, you're Carolyn, and uh, you're it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that you're doing. It's and a nice uh, lake and the wonderful people in there, and so I hope that people can come to it. They're free. If you want to come and uh, listen to the lecture, you're welcome to. But then you want to join the league to be in the shows. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh -huh. So you've come a long way from that cup of coffee. Yes, <laughs> it's neat. Uh -huh. So it is really wonderful. And to get all these people together like that, which is, you know, all a common interest. Yes. And it's really, yes. it really is wonderful that uh, you can do that. We're so I didn't know there were so many artists, you yeah. know, in the township alone, uh, or in Washington County, and that's so it was, um, it's wonderful to know that there are you know, people like you. Thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you very much. And uh, now we're going to go, I believe, to the police station where, again, you have uh, displayed some of your art and uh, with a request from the police chief that he would like some. So, so that's, we'll be going there next then. Thank you very, very much. It was very great having you. <laughs> from uh, Senior Perspective. We're now down at the police station and uh, we are continuing with the, um, the McMurray Art League shoot and uh, we are going to be uh, interviewing Chief Frick mm -hmm. and uh, also we'll be having um, Jenny Swartz. Jenny Swartz. <laughs> I'm having a hard time with my names today. <laughs> so, um, Okay, uh, Chief, what, uh, what inspired you to ask? for paintings for the jail. Actually, jail, uh, I guess I should say police station. <laughs> police station is more appropriate, yeah. <laughs> uh, we were looking at all the wall space we had, and my secretaries asked me what I was going to do with it. And I said, I really didn't have any ideas, but if they thought of something, and they're the ones that suggested uh, contacting the Murray Art League. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got to, to Jenny. Right. Uh -huh. so that's a it's a woman's touch. Woman's touch. <laughs> that's what it means. That's just what it means. <laughs> Um, Jenny, was it hard to get artists to put their paintings here in the police station? Uh, no, not really. Um, I contacted the people in the league and I, I said what, what the chief had asked and I said if anybody would like to donate one of their artworks to the police station, it would be a nice idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, 13 people handed me paintings. Wonderful. It was uh, really, really quite nice. Good. Now, do you change them at different points in time? No, these are theirs. Oh, these, these are, are theirs. Gifts. Oh, these, these are were donated gifts. to the police yes. station. They found a home. They found a home. They found oh, a good. home. Uh -huh. Okay, now, uh, Chief, whenever um, you're talking about art, is it just to you, is it art or just pretty pictures? Oh, I think what we like have there is art. Some of those pictures, not only is it art, but it's renditions of areas within the township which makes it even more unique and specific to the fact that it's a township building. Right. So it, mm -hmm. it adds a lot of flavor to the building, I think. I agree with you. It's better than blank walls. Oh, definitely <laughs> blank, better than blank walls. Uh -huh. So, um, Jenny, uh, how do you feel about hanging pictures in such a negative setting? 
I guess it isn't really. I mean, it like you said, setting. no, it is in a yeah. negative setting. It's, it's, a, it's a public building. Well, the way the department's set up, too, the, the negative aspect of it, where we would process prisoners of that, is segregated from this entire area. So this is more of a public area to begin with. This is where we would bring you as a complainant or a victim to talk with you. Oh. The bad folks are okay. outside that wall there. Okay. And they really never come into this part of the facility. Uh, it would be unusual to have them in this part of the facility. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So it isn't as negative as right. I mean, the connotation that might be. In my mind, too, is to, uh, you know, the... Uh, why would you have pictures in a jail? <laughs> Police station. Yeah. <laughs> Jail's a lot smaller. We, I mean. have, we got a <laughs> one-room cell in our jail. <laughs> I mean, why would you have pictures in there? Now, in a police station, it's different. You're like... <laughs> That's right. We've got a lot of public people coming. I mean, a lot of citizens are through here all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it adds a nice touch to the building. It brightened it up, I think, a lot. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you were very fortunate to be... that they were contributed. To oh, we were thrilled to death that they thought the idea was a good one. We were glad that yeah. they took uh, mercy upon us and <laughs> helped us decorate our walls. Uh, Jimmy, I believe you have a letter where uh, the chief asked for... Uh, yes, the, this is the letter like that we to... received. Um, dear Jimmy, a couple of months ago, Olive Lorito, the police secretary, suggested I contact the local art league and see if they would be interested in making use of our wall space, wall space to display their artwork. And then it goes on to say that we came, Kathy and I, Kathy Hartman came and helped me with this, and she and I brought the pieces and spent a day organizing them and getting them in here. Mm -hmm. Good. It was fun. I enjoyed doing it. Yeah, and it was a wonderful uh, contribution for the league. I mean, it shows that it is a, a humanity thing also, and not just a, uh, well, how would you say it, uh, for themselves, like, you know, that you are in yourself. It shows a lot of community spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which I think is great. And we need to know more about that. Oh, I agree. Well, does anybody have any other thoughts on the subject? No, I'd just like to again thank the McMurray Art League for helping us out and decorating our walls with such beautiful artwork. Mm -hmm. We enjoy doing it. <laughs> so it's, really, it's been great talking to both of you, and uh, if nobody has anything else, then this is Irma Grego from Senior Perspective. Okay, we're back now with uh, in the studio to continue with our art league. Um, and I have uh, four guests here today, and I would like to introduce them. Um, there's uh, Barbara Curry, Tina Wagner, Marlene Humphrey, and um, where am I? Oh, Darla Duffy. I'm sorry, Darla. So uh, we will go start on with the show now, and uh, I'm going to uh, have Marlene Humphrey tell us something of her prospects of the uh, art league. So uh, can you give us some things that you'd like to talk about, Marlene? Sure. I've been a member since 1989. I came in uh, when the league was very small. Uh, we had just maybe about 35 members. And Sally Heston at that time was a president. Um, I was very much impressed. I really hadn't done very much artwork up to that point. And uh, we started offering classes. Uh, in fact, I became a chairman and helped to organize some of the very initial classes for, um, for the Art League. And um, I worked with some of the older members like uh, Lois Rahuba, Carolyn Johnson. In fact, Carolyn Johnson um, talked me into coming to her Monday morning classes. And uh, the very first painting I completed was uh, with James Wallace. Uh, he would give some demonstrations at her mon Monday class. And I had gone out and I had bought some watercolors because I thought, oh, gee, this looks easy. <laughs> well, was I in for a rude awakening? Uh, that watercolor ran all over the paper. And I'm thinking, OK, what do I do with it now? And uh, under Jim Wallace's direction, uh, he, he got me going. And. Um, so much that I, I became a very active member in the league and the following year after Carolyn had been the president she talked me into becoming the president <laughs> and uh, in fact I've been president of the 
Art League now three times, and I, my heart, um, you know, is definitely with the with the, the Art League. With the Art I'm League, sure. uh, I'm very uh -huh. fond of so many of the members. In fact, we grew from 35 members up to 100 and some members um, under. Uh, the time that I was with the Art League. So That's uh, quite an improvement. <laughs> that was quite an improvement because we started offering classes and uh, I think the people felt that you know we were doing something for the community and right. people who had to develop their skills now had a place to go. Right, and when you offer something, well then you have something to go by that uh, you can give to people and uh, it helps them to grow also then. That's right. So uh, and. Uh, you know, we started thinking about ways um, how we could um, raise money for the league because we started having more shows. We needed screens. And Carolyn Johnson uh, came up with an excellent idea. Uh, why don't we develop a calendar? And I know she's already talked about the calendar. And her first year, um, well, the, the year that she was president, we did do a calendar under her, and that was 1992. And we sold out of the with all the calendars that we had published and we decided hey this is a great money maker we're going to continue on and so she talked me into doing a calendar when I became president the next year and I believe she's already shown you that calendar the 1993 calendar and um, we we put as many of the artist uh, pen and ink drawings in here and when Ann Williamson preceded me, she said, we're going to do another calendar. Uh, did so well, and so I'll show you this calendar as well. This was the 1994 calendar, and um, I have a pen and ink that I'm very proud of in this one that I'm going to show you. Uh, it's of the north side, and I had not done pen and ink very much prior to that time. And um, you can see that it, it does have some detail in it. And um, you know this calendar also sold very well. Well, it took a lot of work to put all these calendars together. And so we only did them for three years because the, uh, the next person just didn't have the, the time uh, or the inclination. But, uh, but they're all done in pen and ink so far? Most of them are done in pen and ink, yes. And uh, there, there might be a couple pastels in there that printed out well. Um, but um, it, it took some time for everyone mm. to, to well, put this together. Is pen and ink a certain kind of painting or drawing or something no, like it's, that? No, it's, 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 just, black it's, it's black just black and white. Pen and ink. It's just pen and ink, right. So you, when you're sketching, you have to be a little bit careful because when you, you can't put it down, over. you can't go over it. Yeah, so you have to have a good idea what you're doing. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we've, we've done other things for fundraisers, and, and I think I helped them to promote the very first, what we call the Artist Recognition Luncheon. Uh, we held that at the Holiday Inn at the Meadowlands in 1998. And Frank Webb was uh, our guest artist. And we used that as a major fundraiser where we took so many of our own artist paintings and had them up for auction, for silent auction uh, and for a bidding. Um, and that went quite well. Uh, we thought that maybe the, that this would catch on and all the art leagues in the area would pick up on it and continue to do it. But for some reason, I think they were a little scared of the work. Um, but I'm a workaholic, so, yeah, and you know that. Know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so perhaps one of these, the next time, uh, one, of these, one of these future uh, years, we'll have another one that, uh, you know, that we can get everyone mm -hmm. back together again in doing that, yeah. because it was a fundraiser, a good fundraiser. Well, I know you've met in a lot of places for your classes and everything, so would you mind telling us a little something of where your next move is going to be? Sure. Uh, we had met so many times in the, uh, the Boy Scout building, and I happened to be talking to Sandy Umbach one day. She was running for office, and she had asked me um, what I thought the community needed. And I thought, I said, well, we need a recreational facility where uh, people can uh, just come and, and do various things, whether it's organizations or uh, as we are a group, an art league, uh, it would be nice to have a building. So she 
in, in her running, uh, I don't know how she came across this, this building in Venetia, uh, but it happened to be the old elementary school. And um, she talked me into becoming a board member uh, <laughs> when Venetia Heritage got up and running. And uh, she said, Marlene, okay, you want a place for your art league to meet? This would be a great place if we rehab it. So I became a member of the board. We worked um, on getting that facility. We're still working on We're still it, but it's, working gee, on it. <laughs> it's, it's major improvement since when we first took it over four and a half years ago. And um, you know, I was the Art League's representative for uh, Venetia Heritage Society. I was the liaison. And um, you know, I've done a, even a couple fundraisers for them. You know that, I, as I said, I like to do fundraisers. <laughs> and we've had two golf outings. And uh, in 2000, um, 2000 and 2001, we've held it at uh, the Fort Cherry Golf Club. And I believe that they're talking about having another golf outing this spring. This fall. And, or, well, actually, this fall. That's right. We're starting uh, to work on it now. But the <laughs> right. We're, we're working on it now. But in September, I think, was when we had it last year. And um, this is the 2001. But uh, again, we're, we're hoping to do a 2002. And this helped to raise over $15,000 for the, the renovation of the building. And um, well, we've got to get it ready for you after all. <laughs> that's right. You've got to get that building. You know, we, we've Going. got our classrooms picked out. I know you do. <laughs> so uh, uh, we, just need, we just need to be able to open and actually start having our classes there. And, uh, and I think we'll do just fine. So, um, well, you, as a matter of fact, I am also a board member for the Venetia Heritage. And uh, we are trying so very hard to get that place opened up so you can have a place and we can have a place and all, you That's know. Right. So. Uh, is there anything else that uh, you would like to mention other than that? Well, I know that Lee Hannawalt is, is now the liaison for the Art League, and uh, she will be you know, helping out as, as, as much as she can with the Venetia Heritage Society. I, I'm, my board, my directorship ended in, in December, and uh, I've kind of been spending a little extra time with my grandbabies. We have twin granddaughters, so I go back and forth to Ohio. And um, you know, I'm sure that... Uh, you know, the Art League is still going to flourish. Yeah, but we'll miss you. We really will. Oh, well, thank you. You know, I'm still keeping in touch. You better. Yeah, if not, we'll get after you. <laughs> thank you. So, is there anything else, Marlene? Do you just want me to mention that there is going to be a, um, oh, a yes. covered dish dinner at the uh, Venetia Heritage Society. Um, you know, all the Art League members are invited, as, as well as the people in the community. And that's that Saturday, March 16th. And you'll get an opportunity to tour the building. It begins at 5 o'clock. And you can enjoy the dinner at 6. If you'd like to bring a covered dish, that's, that's all, all the more welcome. But uh, keep that on your, your agenda. And um, you know, come see the Venetia Community Center. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> OK, now uh, let's go to Tina Wagner. Okay. OK. And she's going to tell us a little something about the American diabetes the online, online auction and uh, it happened last December my son Donald is a uh, member of the uh, Washington County and his wife is a director up there and they have a ch well, she isn't a child anymore they had a child at 10 years old that they discovered she had juvenile diabetes and have been interested in the association ever since so this year when they were having a um, online auction Don called me and asked me if I would ask members of the McMurray Art League if they would give paintings. Well, I was very surprised at the outcome because I collected 30 paintings from these good people. Oh, wow. Yes. And uh, it seemed like a long process. It, wasn't, it didn't go on air until about June, and it was on until September. But we had uh, these paintings that you see and um, from artists all over. And um, the uh, I see one old Ireland by Tina Wagner. <laughs> yeah. That's Is anyway. that when you do? Did you do that when you were on your trip to Ireland? No, no? I did it when I came home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, we have one from Jess Hager who did the Golden Triangle. That's number seven, and uh, that is an old one, but and it's a print. 
Mm -hmm. But uh, that was a good one in there. And then the Gwen Hockelberg's Pink Petals. And uh, this man has a uh, gallery, Les, what's his last name? Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Les Zimmerman in Washington. He painted this painting and uh, give, give it to the uh, Diabetes Association. And this is one of our, our uh, ladies uh, who did Nancy Kenny. She always does something great, <laughs> something different. And uh, she donated that. And the one above her is Julia's Garden by Gwen Hockelberg. And uh, the Monday Morning Painters that you mentioned, we always go over to, uh, to Julia's Garden because she has about a thousand uh, lily bulbs planted and they all come up and they're just beautiful. Oh, so we, go, we all go over there to paint and Gwen did that one and uh, she donated that one. And we have a good many of them here. We have uh, the Grand Market Cafe by Mary Kay Karlowitz <coughs> who is a teacher and she teaches every uh, Tuesday at the uh, Trinity, Trinity Boy Scout cabin. And uh, Jane Landau is a, did the farm market flowers, which are very beautiful. And we have, a, it's kind of a, a abstract, but it's Woman of Japan by Mary Ann Colner, which is very pretty. And the Winter Wolves by Pat Barnett's. And so we've had, um, we've had all these painters that gave their paintings, and we ended up uh, in the auction. We made $1,716 for the uh, diabetes auction. And I, I want to tell you, um, there's over 18 million people in the United States that has sugar diabetes. 18 million? 18 million, yes. And every year, there's 800,000 pe new people get it. Yes, it seems to be epidemic. And so they're trying desperately to find, uh, in research, to find the cure that will help these people. And so uh, they, they do all kind of money-making things in order to get, to get the money. And they have meetings up in Washington, PA, every month. And they're working on a golf outing right now. Mm -hmm. And they're working on a seminar for April uh, for people who um, want to learn more about sugar diabetes. And there's a lot of children, which the children, when they get sugar diabetes, it's very, very, um, it's very hard. And it's harder than the onset age diabetes because uh, well, of all the things you have to do when you have diabetes, you have to die, you know, what you eat and, and be careful about everything. So if anybody would like to, to uh, join the Washington County Diabetes Association, They'd be glad to have your help and uh, your company. But um, the whole auction, you might understand, the whole auction, they made uh, $24,000. And uh, of course, we were just a small part of it, but we, we I, hey, think, I, I thank every one of these people who have given their paintings. And uh, I, I don't know, they haven't mentioned having an auction. I think it was very difficult we lost one painting, uh, we, we lost a painting in the process, and then my son had donated for, and he, he had an antique painting which was damaged oh. in route. But I'm sure that the, uh, I don't know which, I'm not going to mention the name of the people who, who took it down to uh, Virginia where they had it. But anyway, uh, there was difficulties with it, but anyway, I'm so glad that uh, it turned out good. Turned out as and well I'm as so it did. And I'm so pleased with our McMurray Art. Like we have some great, great people. Oh, well, I'm Thank telling everybody. you. Thank mm everybody. -hmm. I'm finding out how. Yes. You know, I didn't realize what uh, no. group you were, <laughs> really, <laughs> in that. So. Uh, yes. And I wish you all the luck in the world, and uh, that for all these wonderful things you're doing, and how many people you are helping with oh, this I don't diabetes. Know. I hope so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You are. <laughs> well, it's, I think it's my son and daughter-in-law who do, who do the real work. And uh, I just kind of a spokesperson maybe for them. They need that too. <laughs> <laughs> so. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's go to... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, There's one thing I wanted else. to tell yeah. you about. I, 
I friend uh, Cerise Euler. Oh yes, I've been these, looking at those. Brought these beautiful. I guess I picked this up. This is a ceramic, and and um, Joe Zedner uh, does the ceramic part, and then she does this beautiful weaving with beads. Is that put right onto the top of it somehow? Yes. Or is that added on? Or is that the top by itself? Or is there? Well, they put hole. I think they put holes in it every once in a while so they can put the string uh, through. Can you show that the, where it's hooked on inside or something? Or is it? Where is it? Well, it's. It, where's that it's, weaving attached to? It's. You can see the weaving's done right here. It comes down oh, where these holes are. Uh huh. And it is difficult. Yeah. And she's very good at it. Good at this. And this, this particular one is very light. And this is a gourd. You mean one of those gourds? One the of gourd those gourd? gourds. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see a gourd so gorgeous? No. <laughs> and it is beautiful. And she usually has these on display at our shows. And she's, I think she's one of the ones. She always sells two or three of these. So that's a cerise. And then uh, this particular piece is a metal sculpture and it was done by Bob Baxter, one of our McMurray Art members, and he also he did that painting over there of Rudy the cat, but uh, when he first started doing art, he did the uh, he did the metal sculpture. And he attached it onto what marble? Well, is that it's onto a marble? Yes. Oh, there's a hole there's a hole in the marble. And oh, this, the this piece, yeah. yeah, this piece, I don't know if it's a horse, horse or a dog. dog. I think it's a dog. Dog. <laughs> That's beautiful. I mean, it's yeah. so intricate, and he has, too. He has, he has a, a piece on his fireplace that this big is very intricate that he made. And last year he did a nativity set. It's just gorgeous. But I don't think he's selling any of these. <laughs> I don't think he's selling any of these things. So uh, I want to thank Bob Baxter because he made these uh, easels. And if anybody needs an easel, he used the garden sticks to make it. <laughs> and so they work out pretty good. He yes, must have tomato them. plants, you got art. <laughs> yeah, tomato plants and art. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are very wonderful items there. Yeah. So look at the artwork in that. I mean, it's so, wow. <laughs> Lots of work. Yes, yeah. it is. Well, thank you very much, Tina, for having him for bringing those. And that oh, I didn't bring them. Cerise brought them. Oh, brought she brought them one. over? Mm -hmm. I brought the little one. So, okay. Uh, let's see, we'll go to, let me see, I got, uh, oh, to Darla. I believe you're next, right? I guess so. <laughs> okay, uh, you guess so? <laughs> um, what is your position with the uh, Art League, Darla? Well, this year I took over as president for the Art League, and uh, I've been with the Art League also since about 89 or 90, uh, when Marlene was getting involved. And this has been a wonderful experience for me. Um, I'm a nurse, and I work with elderly and with Alzheimer's patients, and um, I just, looking at patients in nursing homes, I thought this is uh, something to think about and I didn't want to be a patient in the nursing home without an activity and so many of them haven't thought about their their years and their aging and so uh, when I got involved with the Art League it was to talk with patients about activities and lo and behold I became very interested myself and have since um, became a member of the Pittsburgh Watercolor Society and it's just been a joyful ride. Mm -hmm. And the women in this Art League really are special, special girls and fun to be with. We uh, meet for tea and coffee and... Oh, you've got uh, to always eat or drink or something like that. We, I mean, you know, what's a, what's a even, even, when, uh, even when the uh, programs, you know, our show is coming up in May, the first week of May. Uh, it starts on uh, May 3rd. We'll have a reception at the Galleria uh, we'd like the public to come and see this show. It lasts a week. There'll probably be about 30 artists in the program. And um, the girls just come out of the woodwork to help us put this show together. You know, in, in mid-March, you're thinking, boy, 
I don't know where everybody is, and by the end of <laughs> April, everybody's right with you working for this mm -hmm. this art league and putting a, a really good program together. So well, it's something wonderful to show. I mean, my goodness, look at all this. It's just it's mind-boggling, really. This, yes, and, you know. and I'm like Marlene. When I started with the art league, I. I got involved because one day I thought I'd like to paint flowers and I bought flowers and I bought some paints and I was just totally astounded that I couldn't paint what I could see. <laughs> and, uh, and then I thought, well, I have to take some classes and that's when I met Marlene and we started taking classes together and um, Ginny that was on the previous tapes, she started out when I was running the classes and she also had no skill at all painting, and now she has just bloomed in how well she paints. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've just enjoyed this leg a lot. Well, some time ago, I interviewed Peg, Peg Fickenshire. Yes. And uh, it was in her home, and uh, she, I kept saying pictures. You know, well, then I learned you don't say pictures, it's art. Is that right? <laughs> so, that's what she said. That's, a, uh, that's what I learned in that. Uh -huh. so, uh, uh, you have something here that you had told me to mention. Uh, tell us about those uh, memorial awards. Well, we run two shows for the McBarry Art League. One is a judge show in the spring, and then we have a show in the fall. And traditionally, we haven't given any uh, prizes at the fall show. And it just occurred that over the last two years, several of our members have lost significant people. And I called them in the summertime and asked when we had our fall show last year if they would be interested in giving a small monetary award as a memorial to their relative that had mm. deceased. And um, two individuals had lost their husbands and they were interested. And my husband, he had lost two, brother, two young brothers over a period of five years. And he always wanted to do something for them, and it was his idea to consider a memorial award. So we did do that, and uh, it was interesting because it was the members themselves choosing other artists that they enjoyed their artwork for this award. And the people who received the awards were just really tickled. They were beginning artists, had never won awards before. Some of them, this was their first time to uh, display their art, and that's a challenge, and they met it very well. Yeah, well, that's a wonderful idea. I mean, uh, you know, in memory of someone, that's always very something very it special. It was touching. It was touching. Mm -hmm. um, do you have someone that you could tell them who to contact if there's an interest in uh, joining your show, your shows, sure. and, or your classes? I guess that's first. Yeah. Classes are first and then the show. Right, you have to know how to paint. <laughs> how to paint. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we um, write the McMurray Art League newsletter, and it has a list of numbers of people that are on the board. I try to get at least 10 copies of this at the library. Uh, and on the first floor, there's a little community box with information for newcomers that are coming into the area. And, it, and it's a good idea to pick up this newsletter. And it tells all of the activities that we have for that month. We put out five of these a year, and maybe six. I think there's six. And um, uh, anyone, that, anyone that you could call would direct you towards a member, the membership person. But her name right now is Carol Ketty, and her phone number is 412. 653-0838, and she would be very um, helpful in helping you become a member of the McMurray Art League and telling you about our meetings and uh, welcoming you to a group of really nice women. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in this community, this is a good way to volunteer your time. Okay, now if there's anybody that is interested in becoming an artist, do you want to give that number again? Sure. It would be Carol Ketty. 412-653-0838. Okay, maybe you'll get a lot of new people for your classes. In that We'd thing. like that. How many do you have now? We have about 85 paid members at this time. 85? 
and uh, I think uh, our classes usually bring in 10 new members a year and we accomplish that again this year. Mm -hmm. How long do your classes last? Uh, the classes start in September and run through June and then the women independently go out and paint uh, with each other through the summer. Some of us go with Carolyn Johnson and paint with her and others have uh, Ginny, for instance, has uh, hired some teachers to take groups out, and I think they painted at the Gilfillan Farm last year. This year they may be doing that again. Uh, they have today and yesterday they had um, uh, Barry Jeter doing a two-day workshop, and um, we try to find artists in the area that are interested in doing outings during the summer. So it's. Mm -hmm. It's well, I had an experience. Uh, I used to have a little roadside stand there at my house, and I used to get uh, plants from a, a uh, greenhouse. And I just had to put some blocks down and put some planks on top of them, and I had these flowers on top of that. And uh, this gentleman stopped this one time, and he says, do you mind if I paint this, you know? And uh, I said, sure, go ahead, you know, sort of. God, when he finished it, it didn't look anything like mine. It was much, much prettier than my little blocks and boards with some flowers on it. <laughs> so I never saw him again, so I don't know what happened to that painting. But uh, Well, that's you know. what we want to do here. We'd like to inspire people that want to try to, to do this as a lifetime activity uh, to come forward, join the league, and, and believe me, it is a pleasurable way to spend your time. Oh, I wish I could even draw a straight line, but... It <laughs> Everybody can draw. We can show you how to draw. <laughs> and you don't that would be a challenge. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to draw a straight <laughs> line either. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yes, one of our... Get out of the way. Oh, you better... You're wired. Sit down. I'm wired. Sit down. Okay, I don't know if they can see it or not. Um, can I there's a painting up? behind Tina that is done by an artist that moved here to Pittsburgh from New York City. And her name is Joan Vogel. Yeah, she also it. donated a, um, one of her prints to the police station. And um, she's an excellent painter. She li is here living with her son in the Mount Lebanon area. We have quite a few Mount Lebanon artists that are members of the, and Upper St. Clair that are members Bethel of the Park, McMurray Art Lake. Washington. Because of all the things that we offer here. That, it just looks like you go and pick something right up off of the, it it's off very nice, the isn't it? bins and that then. So, okay, is there anything else uh, you have, uh, Darla? Uh, just that we're having a reception at the uh, South Point for the McMurray Art Leg, and uh, our speaker will be Barry Jeter. Okay. And that'll be April 21st at 1 p.m. Okay, is there a, a price that you wanted to say, or do you um, know yet? The, the price is fifteen twenty-five per person, and uh, there's two choices of food, and anyone that would be interested in coming to the buffet luncheon can certainly call me, and my number is 412-341-5681, and we also have the jury, the spring show that's coming up, May 2nd, and we'll be hanging the show, and it begins, our reception for that will be May 3rd, Friday evening. Mm -hmm. And the public is certainly welcome. We're always glad to have the public do our work. I attended one of your receptions, and uh, yeah, that's some the good Galleria. stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> so, at the gallery, yeah, yeah, yeah it's up in the gallery. balcony yeah. area it's like that. Yeah, it'll second be up floor. on the second floor. Uh-huh, yeah, so. Uh, and we hope we can go back there again. They've been very nice to us, and they're going to start their renovation in September. Yes. And we hope that in, uh, it will be able to accommodate us next year. Uh -huh. But uh, you will be there this year, then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tina, did you have something? that I wanted to, do, to show the new headline on the uh, paper that she did. Oh, yeah, the, <laughs> the graphics on our newsletter were done by... Graphics on our newsletter were done by Barbara Curry. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to hear from Barbara. Now, so, uh, Barbara, what position do you have in the uh, guild? 
one vice president of McMurray Art League. I came in to the league two years ago, and in fact, Marlene Humphreys was the person who called me. She had heard that I was doing some programming for uh, another arts organization, and she said, um, would you be willing to possibly help us out with our programs, our monthly membership meeting programs here at McMurray Art League? And um, I, I knew a little bit about McMurray Art League, but I was not a member yet and had not attended any of the meetings. And I, But I, I knew that McMurray was a good league. I knew a lot of the people that were involved in the league, and so I said, yes, I will. And um, to my surprise, when the newsletter came to my house, my name was on there as vice president. I didn't know uh -huh. that the vice president, see, that, that that was what the vice president did. But anyway, the main task of the vice president is to um, coordinate the monthly membership meetings. Um, our meetings are uh, run September, October, and November and then again in February, March, and April, and then we end up the year with a, a luncheon, and this year it'll be on April 21st from 1 to 4 p.m. at South Point. We don't meet during December or January because of the weather, and it's a busy time for a lot of people, and we also don't meet over the, the summer months. The, the meetings are held at Trinity United Methodist Church in until Fellowship you Hall. Until we get down at Venetia. <laughs> right, until we're at the Venetia Heritage <laughs> Society. They meet on the lower level of the Fellowship Hall. And um, we start out at 745. It's on the second Thursday of the month. We start out at 745 with the, a short business meeting. And usually our president, Darla Duffy, will present a 15-minute um, business meeting on what the board is doing and, and um, what have you. And then at 8 o'clock, we start our programs, which is the part that I'm in charge of. Um, our speakers have, what I've tried to do is, is arrange speakers that appeal to a wide audience. And so, you know, we really would like to um, have the type of programs that, you know, it'll invite people from the community to come in that are interested in the arts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, people that may not, may not necessarily be artists, but they're interested in the arts to come in and, and attend the programs and possibly and hopefully decide to join and become members. Some of the examples of the artists that we've had over the two, past two years have been, um, recently we had Tom Sarver, who was a, a puppeteer a uh, fabulous artist and puppeteer, very playful work, a, a young man. We've had Tish Corbett, who runs a, an art school on the south side and does intuitive arts workshops. Jerry Corbin, a professional art therapist. Paul Rendell. Excuse me, an art therapist? Yes, an art What's therapist. That? Um, they are, she's, she works with, in, in the field of psychology, She's um, a licensed psychologist, but they use art as a way um, to, to do the, the therapy mm -hmm. sessions. Oh. So that was, and she did an, a hands-on experiential exercise with the group, which was, was really interesting. Mm -hmm. We also had Paul Rendell, and I brought a, a sample of, of his work here. He's a, a an award-winning aviation artist. His work is absolutely stunning, and it's um, you know in a lot of corporate collections. He shows widely, and and his work is just fabulous. Also, Peter West, um, who runs a, a gallery in Washington, he came in and did a, I believe it was a slide presentation and a and a program on. Um, fine art printing. And I could go on. I have a whole list of people <laughs> that have been here um, for our programs. But mainly, uh, we want to, to have programs that appeal to, to everyone and are inspiring and, mm -hmm. and encourage people. And um, yes, right, we do, we do have a meeting tonight. It's um, with a mosaic artist. His name is Marion Chester. Oh, I love mosaic. And 
And so that's anyone beautiful. that's interested, you know, is welcome to come tonight. Okay, now uh, for the meetings, uh, uh, do you have to be an artist to attend your meetings? Yeah. No, you do not. That's, in fact, you know, what we would like to see is maybe people who don't do art, that are interested in art, they'd like to know more about art. Teachers, teachers who, you know, would like some inspiration on how, how to use different types of art in the classroom. It would be very inspiring. Uh, youth, youth who might be considering art as a career to come in and see how artists work and some of the processes. Um, and anyone who's interested in art as a hobby to see what are all the possibilities. There are so many different types of, of art. And of course, if we're, most of us professional artists that really enjoy coming together and, and have the fellowship of, of artists together and the inspiration of other artists. So those, that pretty much wraps up our programs. Well, that's wonderful. So uh, I, I really learned so much. Well, just doing from one show to another and everything, I don't know uh, how to express my feelings for all this, but this is really wonderful. And oh, there was something, we, we've got to talk oh, about yeah, this. Oh, you didn't talk about uh, your that, one, oh. that one, that uh, one, uh, piece of art over there. Yes. There is something very, very special about it. So yes. would you the mind telling us? Yes, the magnolia, the small magnolia piece. I usually work very large and in fact the, um, the painting here from Taos, New Mexico is a painting that I did um, when I was actually living in Texas and I traveled with several artists out to New Mexico and we painted for a week out there. But the one that's real special to me that I brought today is the small magnolia painting Last year, about this time, um, I got a call from my father that my mother had been taken to the hospital. She was discovered to have a brain tumor. And so I, I went up to be with my, my father and my mother in the hospital. And I, as I was packing, I, I took several little pieces of watercolor paper and a set of gouache paints, which I, I don't usually use gouache either. And while I was waiting in the hospital, I and also a pack of, um, of photographs that I've taken from flowers in my garden. And while I was in the hospital, the last two weeks of, of her life, I did a series of paintings, and this magnolia was one of them. So it's very special. It's a, a connection that I have with my mother. And, um, you know, a, a special ex experience. Right, it'll be but, something that you'll have close to you right. all the time. But I think, you know, for most artists uh, that really practice art, it's art is very much therapy, and this painting is it's all part of you. Part of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, well, I want to uh, thank all of you for coming and for talking about all your art and everything and what you are doing, and uh, it's a very important thing in the community. And, uh, I think more people should really realize how important and how many wonderful things you people do and that so um, I hope that you will be getting some new members and that you will be you know improving all along if you go and that so and I want to thank you all very much again. This is Irma Grego from Senior Perspective.